The Mystery of Edwin Drood. The title alone is enough to spark intrigue in the average person. Charles Dickens' final writing endeavour, although not his last completed work, is a gothic detective murder mystery story. Though, like all good mysteries, the novel is named after the character the crime revolves around, it focuses more on Drood's uncle, John Jasper, a presenter, choir master, and opium addict, who is lusting after his pupil, Rosa Budd. Miss Budd, Edwin Drood's fiancée, has also caught the eye of the high-spirited and hot-tempered Neville Landless. Landless and Drood take an instant dislike to each other. Later, Drood disappears under mysterious circumstances, and Neville is the prime suspect. The story is set in Cloisterham, a lightly disguised Rochester. Although 12 monthly installments of the novel and a serialised format were planned, Dickens collapsed on the morning of the 9th of June 1870, and died hours later. The cause of death is believed to have been a stroke. Throughout his life, Dickens always complained of temporary paralysis and chronic pain in his foot and is believed to have suffered from a minor stroke mid-reading tour some years later. He was 58 years old when he died. Only six of the planned instalments were ever completed, and Dickens left no detailed plan for the remaining instalments or the mystery's conclusion, with the novel ending rather abruptly as such. Jasper visits the London Opium Den again for the first time since Edwin's disappearance. When he leaves at dawn, the woman who runs the Opium Den follows him. She vows to herself that she will not lose his trail again as she did after his last visit. This time, she follows him all the way to his home in Cloisterham. Outside, she meets Datchery, who tells her Jasper's name and that he will sing the next morning in the cathedral service. On inquiry, Datchery learns she is called Princess Puffer. The next morning, she attends the service and shakes her fists at Jasper from behind a pillar. The rest of the story is unknown. Many others, including fellow authors and screenplay adapters, have tried to fill in the gaps left behind. It is generally agreed upon, and straight up directly hinted at in surviving letters from Dickens, that Jasper was in fact the culprit behind the murder. The novel has been adapted various times throughout the years, with each author proposing their own idea of how the story continued and the mystery unraveled. The BBC has adapted the story for television only once as a two-part series in 2012, simply titled The Mystery of Edwin Drood. Most interestingly, it has an original ending where Edwin is revealed to be alive and well, having simply taken an unannounced leave overseas following his argument with Neville and his lack of success with Rosa. Jasper then confesses to having killed not Drood, but Drood's father, Edwin Drood Sr., who is also revealed to be Jasper's father, making Jasper and Drood brothers. After seeing Drood alive and well following the discovery of Drood Sr.'s corpse, Jasper goes mad and kills himself believing Drood to have been a ghost. Drood accepts the twins as his siblings, and Helena and Reverend Chris Barkle embrace one another, though unspokenly. The only other television adaptation known to have been made is the one simply titled The Mystery of Edwin Drood, an ITV series broadcast live in eight 30-minute episodes at 8pm from the 28th of September to the 16th of November 1960, airing concurrently with BBC One's Barnaby Rudge. It starred Donald Sindon as John Jasper, Richard Pearson as Reverend Chris Barkle, Tim Seeley as Edwin Drood, and Barbara Brown as Rosa Budd, with each episode featuring an introduction by actor Michael Ingrams. Assuming it was telerecorded during its live broadcast, this serial is believed to have been lost during the archival purges by UK broadcasters in the late 60s and 1970s, and virtually nothing else is known about it beyond the rest of the cast and the episode titles. Photographs taken from the contemporary newspaper listings and reviews, which do speak positively of the production, exist within the BFI's library, and go into some vague detail about the plot, although a full outline of the televised story does not exist. Most interestingly, Seeley is credited for the final episode, suggesting it may have shared the same twist ending as, or at least a similar one to, the 2012 version, or perhaps Seeley's Drood was in fact murdered in this version, and appeared as a ghost manifested by guilt to the murderer, who was more than likely Sindon's Jasper. Sadly, it doesn't seem as though we'll ever truly know, and the 1960 adaptation will remain as much of an enigma as the unfinished novel. Here are the only known surviving photographs of the production. The 1909 and 1914 silent film adaptations are the only known pre-talkie versions of the story in cinema. Virtually nothing is known about the 1909 film, although the 1914 film has a couple surviving images. A glowingly positive review taken from a contemporary article also exists on IMDb, although both films are referred to as being unavailable to the public. Two feature-length talking pictures have been produced, one in 1935 starring Claude Rains, and another in 1993 starring Robert Powell, both of which took some inspiration from and even did some filming in Rochester.
The story was also adapted for radio numerous times throughout the years. CBS was the first to do this on the 5th and 12th of January 1953, aired as a two-part adaptation as a part of the anthology series Suspense. It depicts John Jasper, played by Hollywood legend Herbert Marshall, as the killer, tricked into giving himself away at the end. Although rare, it can be found online. The BBC has adapted it for radio three times, first, and most interestingly, in 1965, for BBC Radio 4's long-running Saturday Night Theatre Strand. It was repeated once on the 4th of October 1970, although recordings of the production no longer exist, leaving any plot alterations unknown. The other radio adaptations produced in 1990 and 2020 still exist and have been repeated on BBC Radio 4, although they are only ever posted onto the BBC's radio website occasionally and taken down after a month or two. There is also a musical version simply titled The Mystery of Edwin Drood, although it was known simply as Drood during its original run. A musical comedy with book, music, and lyrics by Rupert Holmes proved to be the first modern major theatrical adaptation of the novel. Because Dickens' book was left unfinished, the musical hinges upon a novel idea. The audience decides which of the characters is the murderer. The musical's suspect pool includes John Jasper, Neville Landless, Rosa Budd, Helena Landless, Reverend Chris Sparkle, Princess Puffer, and Mr. Bazard. Adding further interactivity, the audience also chooses either Rosa Budd, Neville Landless, Helena Landless, Reverend Chris Barkle, or Mr. Bazard to play the role of Dick Datchery, since the cast votes that Edwin Drood actually was murdered and cannot be Dick Datchery. Furthermore, two characters are chosen to develop a romance. Holmes wrote brief alternate endings for every possible voting outcome, even the most unlikely. For reasons of dramatic variety, John Jasper is presented as a red herring in the final solution. The audience is discouraged to vote for him, however, and in the final scene, he confesses to the murder only for Durdles to reveal that Jasper hallucinated the attack on Drood after stumbling upon the scene of the murder, and disposed of the body thinking he had committed the crime himself. Not too dissimilar to the 2012 version, except he didn't actually murder anyone, unlike that version. The musical won five 1986 Tony Awards for its 1985 Broadway run, and also ran in the West End in 1987 featuring Ernie Wise as Edwin Carr. Cartwright. In 2012, Area Entertainment produced a London revival of the musical at the Landor Theatre in April and May, which transferred to the Arts Theatre, West End, for a limited season from the 18th of May to the 17th of June. The cast included former Coronation Street star Wendy Peters as Princess Puffer. The production was directed by Matthew Gould. A Broadway revival by the Roundabout Theatre Company during the 2012 to 2013 season was directed by Scott Ellis. The final murderer tabulations assigned to each of the characters and the identity of Datchery were displayed overhead on chalkboards in the foyer, visible to departing audiences. Full video recordings of the musical are difficult to come by. Fortunately, if one looks hard enough, you can find full bootleg recordings of performances online. None of them may be the original 1980s performance, for which I could only find small clips, but at least it's something, and it preserves the play's legacy in some regards. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe.